everybody. This is Jabari. I'm just getting in contact with you to share a few reflections on what today's date is. Obviously, July 4th. And as is custom with the date, a lot of people called me to wish me a happy 4th of July, and they asked me what I was going to do to celebrate it. And I thought long and hard about it, and the truth is, I'm not really in the mood to celebrate this year. Um, everybody who knows me knows that I'm not some person who's, who's prone to contrarian, controversial thought just for the heck of it. I'm not a provocateur. When I say things like that, it comes after a lot of sober reflection. And the fact of the matter is that on this date in 1776, when 56 signatories came to a table to sign a document which echoed the creed around the world that all men were created equal, those same people back at their places of residence and at the places of residence of hundreds, thousands of people they were purporting to represent were people who looked like me in chains, working, these people were not people at all under the law. They were things, property, things to be exploited, to work to the bone and discard it like yesterday's trash if rendered useless. This kind of contradiction is at the heart of the American Genesis. And for a long time, myself, I personally, have overlooked this contradiction. But what George Floyd's death has taught us all is that we can't overlook these things anymore. We have to interrogate the racist ideals that have been passed down to us, the justifications we give ourselves. Whenever we are confronted with questions of race, we can't just try to whitewash it, pun intended. We have to really interrogate why we do what we do and reevaluate what we call the center, the perspective from which we take things. Is this holiday, July 4th, really worth celebrating now? How can we uphold this ideal of freedom when its actual implementation here in this country was so far away then and is still far away now? How can we claim to be free when despite only having 4% of the world's global population, we have 25% of its prison population? How can we be free? How can we be free when despite being the wealthiest country in terms of size of the economy, we can't even cobble together the resources to give our people health care and to protect them, the freedom from want, fear, or disease, to protect them from the coronavirus. We have so many systemic failures, one after another, all stemming from the same thing. Being overrun with self-interest, the inability to empathize with one another because of perspectives and the relativism that comes with being in this modern age, the willingness to sacrifice someone else for the egoistic yearnings selfish yearnings of oneself, this willingness to yield to consumerism at the expense of those who are further down on the socioeconomic ladder, our comfort with discarding those who aren't white because it's too hard to admit, yes, we're racist, is something that we have to reflect on today. It's something that we have to think about. It's something that we have to dedicate ourselves to. And it's not a time to celebrate right now. George Floyd's body is barely cold. And we have to think about that. And obviously, whenever we criticize race, the first thing people reflexively do is say, well, this guy's anti-American. If you, if you pillory racism in such a loud and vociferous way against the flag, sound familiar? 
you come off as anti-American. Well, that's not because we are anti-American. In fact, I love this country and care about it. The reason why you think it's anti-American to criticize racism is because America is as old as racism itself. And racism is an, Ameri as, is, as an American an institution as anything else. And so those two being so closely linked together are often confused for one another. So we have to get real. And as a black man, I get to see two, both sides of the contradiction. I get to see what freedom can look like if brought to everybody while also seeing the progress that has to be made. I get to see both the ideal. I get to fall in love and be awestruck by the Constitution as much as anybody while also knowing the conditions on the street where the Constitution isn't even a dream to be deferred. This status, this ability to see both sides of this contradiction is known by W.E.B. Du Bois, the founder of the NAACP and the first black PhD candidate at Harvard as the double consciousness. And I want to leave you with a quote by him because he articulates exactly what I've been talking about so clearly. It is, it is a peculiar sensation, this double consciousness, this sense of always looking at oneself through the eyes of others, of measuring one's soul by the tape of a world that looks on in an amused contempt and pity. One ever feels his two-ness, an American, a Negro, two souls, two thoughts, two unreconciled strivings, two warring ideals in one dark body, whose dogged strength alone keep it from being torn asunder. The history of the American Negro is the history of this strife, this longing to attain self-conscious manhood, to merge his double self into a better and truer self. In this merging, he wishes neither of the older selves to be lost. He would not Africanize America, for America has too much to teach the world and Africa. He would not bleach his Negro soul with a flood of white Americanism, for he knows that Negro blood has a message for the world. He simply wishes to make it possible for a man to be both a Negro and American, without being cursed, spat on by his fellows, without having the doors of opportunity closed roughly in his face. I want to be both an American and a Negro, just like the boys writes me. But the state of the country kind of makes me pick sides. And right now, I'm not in the mood to wish you a happy 4th of July.